Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I've got a demo. This came from Highlight Go, a seller on Amazon that sent me this and I was interested to see what's inside of it. It's a 12 to 24 volt input. There is a dot 8 amp. Is it 8 amp or 0.8 amp? It's a dimmer designed for LED light. It does dimming. But what I find interesting is what is the circuitry inside and how does it do its magic dimmings. From what I can tell, the unit could be a lot smaller judging by the weight of it. It feels like there isn't much inside. Case molding is a standard size and it was just used. This is stamp printed. Phillips had screws holding the unit together so we can do away with those. On the outside we've got a nice terminal block. It's actually the really good kind. As you can see if I unscrew this there is a metal tab that goes up and down and that's what provides a good solid electric connection to the cable that you put between the tab and the top. So the metal is squished between the two plates. Now there are three types of connectors, screw terminals like this that I've come across. One is where the screw that you're screwing here pushes right against the wire that you want to connect and those are horrible. Uh, very often they break the wire and yeah. Another kind which is slightly better, there is a screw that pushes on onto a thin metal springy tab and those are not too bad I guess, better than the bare screw. But this one is the best kind. Yeah, no cost cutting happened there. Right, let's open it up and see what we are met with on the insides. Single turn pot, 1k potentiometer, B1k, so it's a linear pot. That uh, goes into a little JST connector that we've got here and we've got two more screws. Those are all self-tapping jobs right into plastic, but I guess that's okay. This is not meant to be serviceable. And the board itself, looking at it from the top, there was a provision for three pin device and a two pin device over here. None of those have been fitted because everything is on the back of it and it's surface mount. And here is the circuit. The board is really nicely silk screened with all the descriptions. Um, dimmer main V9, all the values are here. This side here is the input. So this is where the power goes in. Uh, ground and positive. Now the positive is bridged straight over to the output so the output is hot all the time and all the switching happens on the low side. General purpose diode here and that goes to 78L05 5 volt voltage regulator and the 5 volts goes to those two ICs and the top one as you can probably see it's a triple five timer and the bottom one is a LM358 dual op amp and from what I see I think they're using only the top bit of the op amp only one part of the IC and what I think is happening here the triple five timer is generating some sort of a triangle wave I think sort of a triangle the output of it goes to non-inverting or inverting inputs whichever doesn't really matter the second input is being fed from the center from the slider of the pot and the pot is connected with this resistor and this resistor so those are 5 volts through the pot and through another 910 ohm resistor to the ground so this is just a voltage divider to provide a cutoff point for what's happening on the output of the op amp output of the op amp at this pin here goes straight to this device here D472 and that's just a MOSFET it's a trench fed MOSFET really low on resistance on this so it doesn't require much heat sinking at all with proper heat sinking this MOSFET can do up to 50 amps I looked it up on the data sheet 8 amps probably quite easily without being too warm I've got a little solder ball over here and we can remove that there we go we fixed it Let's have a look on the scope, how the switching happens. So here is the setup that I've prepared. I've soldered two little wires, one to the gate of the MOSFET, so that's the output of the op-amp LM358, and one to the essentially the output for this purpose of the triple five timer that goes to the non-inverting input, I believe. Connected a 12 volt, 19 watt panel, LED panel. It's standing right beside me. When it comes on, you should be able to see the light intensity and the in the reflection, so it doesn't blind the camera, but you get the idea on what's happening yeah let's switch it on i've got it connected to the power supply let's put 12 volts in and here we go we've got some light you can see the reflection here as intended so let's also adjust the scope so that should be on let's put it on dc couple switch on both channels there we go so let me just adjust it maybe a little bit so that's a little bit more 
descriptive of what's going on. This is the voltage that's on the capacitor of the oscillator circuit and you can see the curve of charging and quick discharge, charge and quick discharge and that signal is being used to feed into the LM358. On the other input on the LM358 we've got the voltage from the wiper from the pot. By varying that voltage we are able to change the output of the LM358. Here is the same setup but instead of the output of the op-amp I've connected the channel 2 to the wiper. As you can see the light is off and the output of the 555 timer is constantly above the voltage of the channel 2 which is the wiper. But if we increase this a little bit you can see probably yeah, the light is coming on up to the full brightness over here. If we move the voltage down the light goes out. The LM358 it compares the, those two voltages and depending on which one is higher because it works like a comparator it will put the output high or low. Here it is back to the output of the op-amp and as you can see when we increase the voltage the signal goes almost to full DC on and the duty ratio becomes very high. And this is a great example of how PWM works. In a lot of applications this is a lot more efficient than linear regulation where you would simply regulate the voltage. In PWM the output transistor or the mo our MOSFET when it's off it's not dissipating any power because there's no current flow and in its fully on state dissipating very little power because its RDS on resistance is very very low. This particular MOSFET is specially designed for switching like this. The most of the power loss happens during the switching time so whenever the MOSFET goes from fully off to fully on or from fully on to fully off the edge, the rising and the falling edge, this is when it gets actually the heating happens but as you can see this is compared to the rest of the time it's a very small amount of power so the average power dissipation in the MOSFET is very very low. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of PWM and the look inside of the dimmer from Amazon. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up if you did and please make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Make sure to click that bell button otherwise you won't get notifications of any videos that I post. For today that's it. Take care.